Normally, I only ever really do hill climb previews and analyze everyone for nationals. But to be honest, this is the biggest hill climb outside nationals. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that is. We've got 165 entries with well, 150 riders with 15 reserves for the weekend. University of Bristol Cycling Club hill climb. Ted Cross, is, my mate, has sorted everyone out, closed roads and all. It's going to be a good one. So I thought I'd go through the riders. Um, and obviously, we've got some absolute hitters here um, who are going to do some stupid times. Um, so obviously, this is start list feathers off last than me. So try not to get caught by him. Uh, but we, yeah, we got some hitters all round, to be honest. Um, the women's side is looking really good as well. Um, a lot of competition. So I'm going to go through the women's side first. I will have missed people out. I'm sorry about that. I just don't know everyone's hill climbing ability off by heart. Um, but I've tried to go through as many as I know. Okay, so if we go to the women's side, um, unfortunately not too many of them have done hill climbs, the big favourites yet. Um, but one of my favourites, I think, is going to be Bexy Jew. She's won an outrageous amount of hill climbs. I'm pretty sure, well, she's top of the WTTA hill climb series. I'm pretty sure she's won pretty much every open apart from Cycle Club Basingstoke won. And some of the numbers have been super solid. So this is the Swindon Wheelers one, um, which is the second one, which I think was estimated power. She sometimes has power, sometimes doesn't. But estimated is like 6.3, um, which, you know, is is very solid. Generally, um, I think to win Belmont uh, for women's side is about six watts per kilo. Um, we've got Charlotte Davies, uh, former member of UABCC before she turned into a trade to went to FTP Racing. But alas, we'll um, talk about, the less we talk about that, the better. Um, came 37, but again, that's, that's slightly useless because the CTT don't really give you the breakdowns on the women's versus uh, men's side. But it, it was a very solid result by her. And uh, Ted Cross has said uh, she's putting out some outrageous numbers. Um, so if we type in female, we can see uh, she came, I think, third potentially. Um, but anyway, so I think, you know, that may not the top, top result but for Charlotte, but I think kind of the big day, I'm, I'm expecting large things from her. Ted Cross says 540 for a minute. Uh, which is which is very solid, um, and then if we go, um, I guess seven seven was quite good. So we'll, we'll look into a couple other people there because I think I might have messed up people out. But uh, Kate McTeer, she came third in nationals in 2018, uh, a very similar climbish to Belmont in terms of time. Obviously, uh, steepness was was very different. Uh, but if we we look at the results here, um, they probably again won't say too much. Uh, but she came seventh last year in nationals, which is a lot longer course. Um, but yeah, third in 2018 and generally uh, wins uh, Belmont pretty much every year. I'm pretty sure for the last like five years or something stupid. So although like she hasn't done any old climbs this year, I reckon Kate's still going to be on absolute hit. Um, big day out um, and I'm expecting, I don't know who's going to win to be honest, but I think I, I don't I don't want to, you know, not not go for the UBCC members, but I, I think it could potentially be Bexie Jew. Um, Natalia Grincher has also seems to have some decent results. Again, CTT is slightly useless because you can't see what they came, but I think she came like second and seven and maybe third and Whittacombe or something. And Minehead with 17.39 is another solid time. Obviously, very different duration. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be very close. I, I, I can't really tell. The form is, you know, the formal guide is, is not necessarily all here. Hill climbs can just on the day. You turn up and you're just feeling it and you whack it. But I'm I'm going for Bex Dew, I think. Top of WTTA hill climb series, showing the consistency. It's a short climb. Seems to say on Strava she preferred that, so that's who I'm going for. We'll, we'll go over to the men's. Obviously, I'm going to include myself because obviously there's a very high chance of me definitely not winning this. Uh, but this is the segment. Actually, I, sorry, I should have gone through this before I went through the women's. Actually, um, but it's 1.33 kilometers at 7.5 percent. You may know this climb from Cy Richardson where he tried to get the com, but the com goes junction to junction, so it, it is slightly longer. I'd say about maybe 10 to 15 seconds longer um so the watts per kilo normally it's about eight and a half to win that's what sam Lindsay did back in 2018 but obviously that was a an exceptional day um in terms of wind but we can also see a feathery man has done nine watts per kilo for three minutes which is obviously incredibly normal behavior um and that was not on a windy day uh, by feather which is why he didn't get the com if he was on a windy day it would have been like a 240 something stupid um but you can see some of the contenders already on this list, um, and we'll go over to them now. So first up is Mr. Andrew Feather, uh, my favourite for the day. Although Ed Laverick has been getting in his head rent-free about you know, he can only do climbs where um, he has to stand up. Uh, and he didn't do some of the longer ones, which I thought he might have done. I still think Feather's probably going to win it, to be honest, um, because I can't see anyone doing like his uh, hill climb he did the other week, which is a similar duration. 8.8 .8 watts per kilo for two minutes, 53 minutes. 
I can't see anyone beating that, to be honest. And you might be like, well, why have you picked him first? Well, I just have, OK, but we'll go through some other people who could, you know, on a good day, come close or get a podium. But with Feather's form, even though the climb uh, may not suit him necessarily because you climb out the saddle and obviously at the saddle, the draft is, is decently higher. And it's a pretty fast climb, sort of 26, 27 average will be uh, speed. This speed here is actually no, this speed is roughly at uh, 28k now, maybe a little bit too fast. But, you know, that sort of speed and obviously aero is pretty important. And obviously wheels and stuff and bike help and the skin suit. But obviously the person and position on the bike is the most important thing. Uh, and obviously, if we look at Feather's results on the Cycling Time Trial website, uh, that we don't really see anything that isn't a first uh, this year. So that obviously, that's uh, super impressive. He didn't do all the all the hill climbs like he, he didn't do the um, long one here because it was in the saddle. Uh, and yeah, as as we mentioned before, um, I, d I don't know why he didn't do that one, but definitely should have done. But alas, um, you know, he's he, yeah, he's done some pretty pretty solid ones. These were two short ones. Um, and, he, and he won both of them as well. So it, it's been outrageous from Feather. Like, there's me. Um, we'll, we'll go back to me in a bit because obviously, you know, unfortunately, not going to be competing for the win yet. But you never know. Uh, if some if a jiffy bag came in, could happen. Uh, we then go over to Cam Biddle. Cam Biddle has no power data this year. I don't really understand why. Doesn't really make any sense. So obviously, if you don't have power data, I'm not going to analyze your Strava pretty much because what's the point? Um, and obviously, if you don't get analyzed by me, then you haven't really made it in the hill, UK hill climbing scene, have you? Uh, so anyway, he's won a fair few events, Cam Biddle, he's, he's done well on this climb before, uh, and so I expect him to have a good go. Can I beat Feather? I just don't know. He got beaten by Feather in both of the ones in the Solid Hill CC, two days, two stage hill climb, uh, Somerset Road Club again second, Dursley second, and guess who won both of those? Yes, it was a feathery man. So I have to say, even because it's also a, a sort of a a climb more suited to the powerful rider as it's not as steep. I think it's going to be a tough one for old Biddler. But Biddler will have to, you know, see what it is. This is my mate Tom Arkell. Hasn't done too many hill climbs this year. Uh, but he has come second in both. And uh, to be honest, he's been looking pretty strong. Uh, his numbers in training have been getting better and better all season, which is quite exciting. Um, he does have the power meter that I have given him. So obviously, everyone abused my power saying it was rubbish in 2019. So if you think his power is rubbish, I disagree. Um... You know, watts per kilo wise to the lad on actually the highest he, he is like eight watts per kilo but the thing is the absolute watts are just off the chart from the man um and uh yeah he's he's been flying he got second at seven obviously seven is significantly shorter you know maybe 40 seconds shorter which on this type of thing is you know almost a third shorter um but kingston wheelers uh he was doing you know 345 um so maybe it's slightly longer and he also came second and that was some decent hitters there as well so i'm expecting arkel to have a top day out Fifth last year, I believe. So, uh, yeah, we could see definitely him finishing higher up on, potentially on the podium this year. Things go his way. Next up is the big man, Carl Jolly. Uh, he's I've been driving him hill climbs left, right and centre. He's been winning them left, right and centre, um, which is ideal. Maybe more of a man for the long stuff. We don't really sure with Jolly. No one really knows about him. Uh, apart from, I don't think he even knows what he's good at yet. But he's, he's you know, let's be honest, DNS on the first one, his break blew up. But since then, it's been a win third, fifth, fourth, hasn't really been outside the top five yet. And I can't really see that. Con I can see that continuing on Belmont. I think a top five is definitely happening. He got fifth last year. Oh, no, yeah, third last year, maybe, potentially, old Carl. Uh, I might get Carl and Arkell mixed up. But um, alas, he's definitely going to have a top day out. Uh, I think it suits him relatively well. Uh, he's a punchy old man. And uh, he just got a power mirror and he whacked about 5.9 watts per kilo for 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, he says 64, but he's not that heavy. He's, a, he's lighter than that. Uh, and obviously to drop out in his power. So if, you, if you're whacking 5.8, 5.9 watts per kilo, which is what the man's doing, then you're going to be strong. Um, I, you know, obviously the long stuff maybe suits him a bit more, but I, I think on the short stuff, you can't discount Carl Joy. Definitely a man to watch. We're now going to go to Coiner. Coiner hasn't had the best season, I think he'll admit on it. Um, but alas, I think, you know, sometimes, you know, you can have bad days out. Obviously second and Whittacombe was pretty good, but seven, I think he expected more. Um, well, it at least seemed to be the case on the Strava. Uh, and I think, you know, sometimes you can have a disappointing season, but then it turn it all around. And to be honest, I feel like Belmont does suit him a lot. A bigger lad and just does stupid watts. Um, here he's doing 595 watts for two minutes, which is just stupid. Again, not the biggest watts per kilo, similar to Arkell, like eight watts per kilo. But, you know, on Belmont, again, it's a fast climb. Watts per kilo, obviously, is still very important. You can win it as a small rider for sure. Um, 
But I also do believe that, uh, you know, he has the capability on maybe, you know, he does prefer the shorter stuff, maybe more like two minutes. But I, I do still believe Josh Coyne can win it. Um, and that's a bold statement, potentially. But I think the numbers he's shown before, uh, especially, uh, would be good. I think for him, though, it would have to be, you know, eight and a half is talking, you know, 580 watts or something. So it, it would have to be a pretty outrageous performance. Next, we have the big man, Richard Gildea. Um He's good at everything, it seems. Uh, TTs and the all. So um, he's obviously it's his home home national championships. His his club, I believe, is organising it. So obviously he'll be looking to hone his form before nationals. Uh, third at seven and second at Chippenham and District Wheelers. Um, didn't start Newbury, but uh, Solihull. You know he was fourth in that. But if you look at the trajectory, he's been getting, and I say this quite often, but I think this is very true. Better and better all season. Um, ninth on the two minute 40 climb, but then seven third. That's a big improvement. And the field was, you know, pretty similar standard uh, to what we had previously. So I just have to get rid of these. Can't actually see the top of my screen. Uh, and if we look at the numbers here, uh, again, he is private on Strava. Please don't be private on Strava because I will find your data. It just takes a bit longer. Uh, eight and a half watts per kilo for two minutes. So again, very solid. If he needs to win, though, he needs to find an extra, you know, kilo, uh, half a ki watt per kilo for an extra minute or, you know, 40 seconds. And I think that's going to be a tough going. Obviously, this was the second hill climb of the day after Chippenham and District Wheelers in the morning. But I still think for Gildare, potentially a top five, but I can't really see much more than that. Because unless you're adding, if you're adding half a watt per kilo in a and an extra minute in a week, and my God, you're either tapering very well or there's some not normal things going on. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, that comes to the end of the preview for everyone else. Now you're all probably going to click off my video. But if you do actually care about how the big man himself is going to do on the weekend, then uh, obviously feel free to stay. So last time I did Belmont was a 2018 when I wasn't actually uh, made a metal. And that was pretty ideal. And I did 450 watts at 60 kilos, seven, seven and a half. So just a calm one, one watt per kilo shorter. So obviously I'm not going to be going for the win. But we can see here my numbers last uh, last week. I just do some minute and a half trainings. Very comparable to last year. I generally find these minute and a half ones is you know, just a little bit below what Belmont pace would be. And I was bang out 4.30s, like no tomorrow, which I was very content about. Again, 4.20, uh, 4.30. And then I think this one, I just decided to absolutely launch it. And we whacked 4.40. And then this one here, I was a bit soft and pulled the plug. But we were on a we were on a decent number. We were on 4.55. Then yesterday, then today, um, I didn't didn't mention Andrew Kirby, um, but he could also become, uh, you know, he was looking pretty punchy. I was whacking out 10 watts per kilo like no tomorrows on these 45 second efforts, which I was I was pretty happy about. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, obviously the issue is, is that I'm, I might be whacking 9.7 watts per kilo out, but I'm not sure I can hold 9 watts per kilo for three minutes, um, which is obviously a bit disappointing. But, uh, you know, I'm expecting a, a good day out for me. It was if I could whack same power 450 watts for three minutes and you know, 58 kilos, 59 kilos, hopefully on the day, that would be about 7.6, 7.7 watts per kilo, which, you know, should put me in the top 10, I hope, uh, but we will see. So anyway, that comes to the end of my analysis of the Belmont Hill Climb. It's going to be unreal. Obviously, normally get down there and support, but you can't because of stupid Rona. Uh, but obviously, keep your eyes peeled on the CTT website um, and you will see who has won it. I think it's going to be Feather. I think last man off. Feather's getting GCN, the whole crew to film him. So obviously I'll try and get on camera because it'll be rude not to. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Um, obviously we're going to have one for the Nationals. Uh, that is huge. Um, there's going to be It's going to be pretty in-depth, that one. I might actually plan it. First video ever. There's always a first for something. And that could be planning a video before I make one. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.